everybody, I'm Kim Babbage Gazelle. This is Kevin Hirschfield, and this is the very first ever edition of Gold Eyes Extra Inning here on Shaw TV. This is a brand new program. We'll be bringing you every two weeks for the duration of the Gold Eyes season. So excited to be here, Kevin. We're super excited to bring you this show. Uh, I think we're going to show you the Gold Eyes like you've never seen them before. Uh, this isn't going to be like your typical highlights game recap show. We'll do a little bit of that, of course, to, to follow the team throughout the year. But uh, we want to go behind the scenes with this team, uh, get you to know the players a little bit better. These are funny guys. We've already been talking with them here early in the season. These guys are characters for sure. So we're going to be doing a lot of that. Uh, Tom Vates is going to be giving us some baseball tips as well. So it's always good to learn about the game that way as well. Uh, the Gold Eyes are always in the community too, doing a lot of charity stuff throughout the year. So we're going to follow them all summer. They go to tons of events. They've already been at tons of events. The season hasn't even started. So they're all over the place. Uh, and of course, we're going to touch on the fans as well. I think these are some of the best fans in the American Association. They're all here when those theme nights come, mm -hmm. you know, the zombie nights, yeah. bark at the park Bacon and stuff. Night. Uh, they're so creative <laughs> with the stuff that they wear too. So, you know, we're going to be here for those nights. And yeah. there's some diehard fans here as well who've been with this team since the very beginning. So uh, you're going to learn a little bit more about them as well. This is going to be a fun show, action-packed show. Yeah. It's going to be fun all summer. Well, today, of course, is the very first day of spring training for yes. 2017. We've got the open house going on as well. So there's lots going on in the park today. The guys are behind us for the first time together. This is the first time they've actually had Rick Forney uh, leading the crew because he just arrived in town. So uh, big day for everybody and a big day for the show. We've got a lot uh, to tee up. So Marlene, who you may recognize if you're a Shaw TV viewer, she is yeah. like the biggest Gold Eyes fan ever. We made her a star yes. last year. She had her own segment yes. and she killed it. And, yes. she, and I think we're going to be seeing her a few times. Year, That's right. So she's back and yes. she's going to be talking to the fans today. And uh, we are going to introduce you, as we said, to some of the players. We've got some funny stuff coming up, so stick around for that. But first, we're going to throw it over to Winnipeg Gold Eye staff Tara Maslowski and to Steve Schuster. And they're going to talk about what we can expect to see here at the ballpark and on the field in 2017. Gold Eyes Foul Balls are brought to you by Mako Fender Bender, Rear Ender, Mako Collision Repair, and Auto Painting, 983 Wall Street. We are joined here with Gold Eyes General Manager Andrew Collier. Andrew, take us through what an off season looks like. Um, so Rick and Tom are busy working in the off season, trying to recruit guys to come to Winnipeg. Um, we've been lucky enough to have a lot of returning guys this season. But take us through that. Are you involved with that process? Does he reach out to you, or they just kind of show up and you go with the flow? Uh, Rick and Tom put the team together, so they're talking to players all off season. Um, once they've talked to them and convinced them to come to Winnipeg or come back to Winnipeg, then they let me know. Uh, they send me their email address, cell phone number, that kind of stuff. I put the contract together, get them to sign the contract, and then uh, take over from there. Make sure they get to Winnipeg on time, have a place to live, work on the immigration, all that kind of stuff. So last season, obviously winning the American Association Championship, there's about, I think, 10 or 11 guys that chose to come back this season. So what makes Winnipeg so special? Why do you think those guys chose to come back for another season? It's the fans. I think they... They love Shaw Park, playing in front of the home crowd. They like the support they get from the staff here at the ballpark, uh, the media in Winnipeg. It's it's really a good place to play. And having been here for 24 years, you hear from guys that this is a really good place to play after playing it in uh, in other cities and affiliated ball, independent ball. They they like it here. So I just most recently found this out. Um, you've been in attendance for all the Gold Eyes Championships. So 1994 in Winnipeg, 2012 in Wichita, and then again this past year, 2016 in Wichita. What was going through your mind in Game 5 in Wichita last year during championships? Um, actually, both 20, all three of the clinching games were not really close. So I was able to not relax, but feel a little bit better in... 94, uh, Dan Billardello hit a grand slam in the middle of the game to put us up by a lot, so that was good. And then 2012, we, I think we won 8-3. And then last year, Reggie went on a tear and knocked everybody in. So it wasn't that close. So I was able to relax a little bit, but not until that last out was made. We're going to let fans in on a little secret about you. So I found this out the past couple of seasons working here. You are a very superstitious person. So has that always been from the get-go, or has that been when the team goes on a winning streak, you just stick to what you've done, or talk to us a little bit about that? 
Yeah, I think it kind of started in 2012, but probably before that. I just like to do the same things if things are going well and change it up if they're not. I I guess that's superstitious, but I don't do the same thing every day all year. It's just when the team's winning, if they're winning, then if I happen to have a certain thing for lunch that day that they won, I'll do the same thing the next day. And, and if they don't win, then I'll change it up. And yeah, I just like to keep things consistent if things are going well. Manitobans recycled over 85 tons of residential material last year. That's enough to fill Shaw Park over 10 feet high. When each person pitches in to help make our community greener, everybody wins. Learn more about Multi-Material Stewardship Manitoba and what you can and can't recycle by visiting simplyrecycle.ca. Well, I think everybody felt there was something special at the beginning of spring training, even though the first month and a half the team was around 500 and, and a lot of people point to the uh, early July as being a turning point in the season, which is when the team took off in terms of wins and losses. But from day one in camp, uh, everyone was talking about playoffs, winning a championship, going all the way. So uh, with so many guys on the same page that early in the game, uh, you know, regardless of what that record was those, those first six or seven weeks, I think everybody felt from the very beginning that uh, that team could do something really special. They've been playing must-win baseball from the middle of July through the end of the year. The, the postseason berth, the wild card, was clinched in the very last day of the regular season. So I think the team was really battle-tested going into the playoffs. But, uh, you know, obviously it was a tough loss in Game 3 in St. Paul. Uh, they lost on a walk-off home run, which gave the Saints a 2-1 to series lead. But uh, nobody panicked. You know, everyone kind of bared down. And it was fun to watch that, that fourth game. They didn't score the winning run until the ninth inning. Uh, scored it against maybe the top closer in the American Association last year. That same game, Reggie Abercrombie had a straight steal of home plate, which is something you rarely see at all, let alone in a, a critical playoff game. And then, of course, game five against the Saints in a hostile environment there at CHSV. Mikey O'Brien steps up in three days of rest. Uh, seven shutout innings. Uh, out pitches Mark Hamburger, who was maybe the best starting pitcher in the league last year. And uh, the bullpen gets it done. First Game 5 win for the team since 2003, and uh, they go on to face Wichita in the championship series. Last two games in Wichita, what are some of the moments that stick out to you there? Yeah, again, you're down two games to one. Uh, the Wingnuts have the best uh, home winning percentage in the history of the American Association, so uh, not an easy task to try and win two games in their ballpark. But, uh, you know, Edwin Carl stepped up in a big way in Game 4, the, the championship series. He was pitching on three days of rest, kept them off the scoreboard, uh, Michael Gonzalez and Reggie Abercrombie had a couple of huge home runs in that first inning to kind of give Winnipeg some breathing room. And then, of course, Game 5, after playing so many close playoff games those previous two weeks, uh, you know, they put four runs on the board in the first and were pretty much off and running. Kevin McGovern stepped up in three days of rest, uh, kept Wichita scoreless over the first six innings. And, you know, of course, the historic performance by Reggie hitting the two homers and driving in seven runs. So, you know, you had nine, you know, nip and tuck playoff games leading up to that decisive game to win the championship and then it was pretty much smooth sailing there winning 11 to 4. What do you feel it was about this team they were able to come back not only once in the playoffs but twice down uh, 2 to 1 on the road. What was it about that team that made those comebacks possible? Well, from what I saw, I think it was a combination of what I said earlier, that from day one, you know, even though there were ups and downs throughout the season, from day one in spring training, everybody believed that they could all go all the way and win the championship. And it's kind of rare in independent baseball where um, the majority of the team stayed together throughout the entire year. I mean, there were obviously a couple of key additions like, you know, Willie Cabrera, Victor Capian, and, and Winston Abreu. But for the most part, the, the overwhelming majority of that team from spring training was, was with the club until they won the championship. So, you know, a combination from that, of that belief for, from day number one and the fact that these guys really did care about each other uh, to a man, that they, uh, it was one of the best club passes I've ever seen and uh, one of the best professional club passes I've been around in terms of guys just caring about each other as people in addition to getting it done there on the field. What's the feeling like being part of an organization? You start at the beginning of the season, you travel so many miles to cap everything off such a long year with a championship. What's that feeling like? It's, uh, it's hard to describe, to be honest with you. It's really hard to describe. It's, uh, it was the first time I'd ever experienced that, and for a lot of the players of the team, it was the first time that they had experienced it. It's just kind of one of those things you have to enjoy as it happens. And um, I don't think it set in for a lot of guys until after that, that final ad had been recorded and after that celebration it kind of carried on for a couple of hours because uh, it was must-win baseball for such a long time. And, you know, even going into that fifth game, 
in Wichita that it was just, you know, they were just fighting for their lives. They were fighting inning by inning, at bat by at bat, and then all of a sudden, you know, it happened. You get that 27th out in game number five, and, you know, it's almost a, a relief as much of it is a, a joy at that point. I don't know if you know much of how the other teams are shaping up, but uh, what do you think are the chances that this team can maybe do something special like they did last year? Yeah, it's, I mean, uh, obviously you're really excited about what the Gold Eyes have brought back, not just in terms of the, the, the 12 players from the championship team, but they brought some really intriguing names uh, from outside of the organization. Uh, as a lot of managers like to say, um, it's easy to get excited, but everyone else is putting together a great roster as well. But you know, I think at least on paper as of you know, end of April, early May, that uh, I think you feel as good about Winnipeg's chances to make another run as any other team in the league right now. Right. I, I'll ask you about the fans too. Uh, you've been here a couple of years now. I'm familiar with all the fans, and you've seen a lot of fan bases throughout the league. Where I mean, where does this fan base kind of rank? And I mean, how are they during last year's run? Yeah, I mean, it's second to none, and that's not to take anything away from the other great fan bases around the American Association or the affiliated minor leagues. But uh, in terms of the the volume, the number of fans that come out game after game and year after year here in Winnipeg, and uh, how closely they pay attention to the team, how passionate they are about the Winnipeg Gold Eyes, uh, it, it really is second to none. It's, it's fun to watch from my perspective, and I know it's one of the, uh, the major reasons why guys want to come back year after year and why uh, players from other teams, you know, when, when they become free agents or become available, they want to come to Winnipeg to play here because of the great fan support. Home Run Sports is proud to support this community production of the Gold Eyes Extra Inning. Official supplier to and proud sponsor of the Winnipeg Gold Eyes, slide into Home Run Sports at Bishop Grandin and Lajabodier or online at homerunsports.com. We've got all the bases covered at Home Run Sports. Get ready for your game. Uh, really sweet Christmas present to come home to. I want to say thank you to everyone in the organization for these amazing rings, and uh, thank you to everyone in the city of Winnipeg for an amazing season. Hello from Texas, Dallas, Texas. It's about 60 something degrees, I think. Finally, it was like 30 something last night. Um, sitting here, my wife's recording, just got married. Uh, got my championship hat on, looking for the one next year, and I got my ring. Let's go ahead and open this up. Damn. Got to get another one next year, next year, all right? Love the city in the background. The diamonds are nice as well. And it seems like just the other day we were pouring champagne on each other in Wichita, celebrating our big victory. Hey, everybody in Winnipeg. I got a special gift in the mail today, and I just want to say thank you for an amazing season. Uh, I want to say thank you to the front office, uh, to my host family, and especially to you fans for all the support that you guys gave me this year. How's it going, Winnipeg? I just want to say thank you guys for coming out and supporting us in 2016, helping us win this ring, and uh, let's do it again in 2017. David Rowe, I'm out here in California. Just got home to find this nice ring. Thanks for a fun season. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's the good stuff right there. Bam, right there. Bow, bow. Bow. Shout out to all the fans. All the boys at home. Yeah, this is awesome. Thank y'all. Front office, everybody. Everybody. Thank you, Skip, Hoopy, Adam, Rome, everybody. Mama Hen, everybody. Cabrera, Mikey, everybody. Thank you for making this possible for me. It looks real nice on my chocolate skin. Looks nice. Boston Pizza, proud sponsors of your Winnipeg Gold Eyes.